Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. 2015 is almost here, and with it comes those New Year's resolutions to finally transform your body the way you want it. There's a reason over 88% of New Year's resolutions fail. Make this year different by equipping yourself with Oxy Powder, the next level in cleansing the body naturally. Using Super Oxygenation, Oxy Powder, available through InfoWarsLife.com, gently cleanses the body while you sleep with easy capsules. Tens of thousands of individuals have used Oxy Powder to cleanse their bodies and aid in their transformations. Even InfoWars Nightly News Director Rob Dew has been using Oxy Powder with incredible success. Took it that first day, and then I took it for six more days after that. 12 pounds melted off in about a week. I'd say a week, seven days. 2015 can be different. Diet and exercise are important, but a lot of us have already tried that. Oxy Powder flushes it out. Secure your Oxy Powder at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. Sold out for weeks due to the difficult and extensive proprietary process behind its creation, the exclusive InfoWars Life Secret 12 formulation is now back in stock in the last limited shipment of 2014. The most bioactive form that has been created with our proprietary process. This ultra-clean vitamin B12 nutraceutical has been carefully crafted and developed over the last two years and is based on cellular science of how your body actively absorbs essential nutrients. Secret 12 is taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Vitamin B12 deficiency is linked to scores of serious problems. And Secret 12 is a fusion of two organic proprietary forms of vitamin B12, bringing you a true nutraceutical quality vitamin B12. Secret 12. Secret 12 is an excellent Christmas gift and is tailor-made to boost your New Year's resolutions. Supplies of Secret 12 are very limited. Secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. InfoWarsLife.com. Check it out today. I have set out to bring you the most hardcore, cutting-edge supplements and nutraceuticals bar none. And that's what you'll find at InfoWarsLife.com. We have rejected literally hundreds of products from the InfoWars Life line because they are not of the very highest quality or because they're not 100% organic or because they don't pass all of the strictest toxicology tests there are that we have listed at InfoWarsLife.com. Whether it's Survival Shield Nascent Iodine or DNA Force, Super Mel Vitality, Super Female Vitality, Lung Cleanse, Fluoride Shield, Oxy Powder. I believe that all of these products will blow you away like they've done the thousands of other customers that have visited InfoWarsLife.com and believed in us and tried the products. Folks, check out InfoWarsLife.com today and the entire line of groundbreaking, cutting-edge, hardcore products. To an InfoWars.com frontline report. It's Alex Jones. I want to go in a bunch of different directions with Lionel, our guest, Lionel Media. I've got other articles here. Smartphone use changing our brains, BBC. A new article at InfoWars.com. Feds preparing for new surge of illegal use. Preparations coincide with dismissal of Sheriff Arpaio's amnesty lawsuit. But going back and talking to Lionel, I get as a former prosecutor or whatever, you go off the law and they can argue the law is any, I've seen cops beating people with billy clubs and they raise their arm to block the blow and they call it resisting. And I understand Garner had been arrested a bunch for, you know, selling cigarettes on the street or whatever. It was a father of six, but they do start choking him. And then when they say, put your arm behind your back, well, they've got him in a pen hold and they use an illegal chokehold so i think i don't think they intended to kill him i don't think it was premeditated but i know how people watching that get extremely upset by it absolutely yeah no I, no alex absolutely because first of all if i were to represent the officer pantaleo in this i put the medical examiner on and say tell me the cause of death did Officer Pantaleo do it? Was it a chokehold? Well, it wasn't a chokehold. It wasn't a carotid restraint. It looked like it. It was a badly applied something or other. No, no, that's right. Let me tell you something. That video, were it not for that video, but Alex, that's not the case. 
That's not the issue. We have right now a number of people who are out there showing a disdain and an anger and a disgust with police abuses. And you, I believe, and I are right there with you. Alex, we have been talking about the hypermilitarization of the police for years before it was cool. We talked about 1033 programs. We talked about the fact that Sheriff Andy became RoboCop. We talked about, and you did it first, and I heard this to your credit, Alex, I, another example where I'm thinking, I don't think Alex is on the money with this, because one day, I'll never forget, you said, we have a story here of a police, uh, of a, a number of police departments that uh, released or actually deemed people unfit to serve because their IQ scores were too high. And I thought, well, I think Alex finally got, got a bad source. Sure enough. So we live in a country where we are having this systematic, almost systemic militarization of the police. We're there for that. We also, Alex, believe in the First Amendment. And we believe the people have the right to do it. However, and we also go, I don't want to speak for you, but there is racism. There has been racism. But what I've just provide you, provided to you, Alex, are three somewhat nuanced arguments that are not necessarily connected. They're different. And once the meme starts in this country, once the hashtag is begun, once the I can't breathe, Black Lives Matter, we're off and running. The hell with the facts. I don't care what he did. Eric Garner resisted arrest. That got the ball rolling. The proximate cause, the initial impetus, the momentum. Alex, you know better than anybody. You have been out there in every conceivable protest and rally, and when the cops come to you, you know the rules. And you may say, I'm going to win in court. I have a First Amendment right. But you're not an idiot. There's an old expression. You can beat the rap, but you can't beat the ride. Eric Garner, and we always have to say this, it was a tragedy that he died. He doesn't deserve. I know that. We all know that. But here was a guy on Staten Island, Richmond County, where a number of store owners called the cops and said, he's back. Get him out of here. We're, we're taxpayers. He's back. What are you supposed to do as a police officer? I'm sorry, ma'am. Why? Well, in the scheme of things, selling Lucy's is really not a big deal. Excuse me. That's the law. Get him out of here. Now, I'm not saying that anything other than would people please when you have these talks with your sons, whether they're African-American or what, say that, yes, son, we understand sometimes these police, but don't resist arrest. Don't mouth off. Let me tell you what happened here in New York. We had, after Eric Garner, our Mayor de Blasio, who was married to an African-American who has mixed racial kids, which is fine. He's, after he gave his speech as the administrator of a multi-billion dollar corporation called the city of New York, after he spoke as mayor, not as a progressive, not as somebody who vacations and uh, honeymoons in Cuba, not at, no, 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 you're a mayor. After he did it, he said, and by the way, and I thought, oh God, here we go. But he said, by the way, he kind of gave it Obama, you know, I see the Eric Garners, and I see myself, or I see my son, and I've had conversations with my son, and the police went berserk. What are you doing? You're, in essence, understanding, you're calling for calm, doing your thing, but you're tacitly, Alex, countenancing, understanding, giving heft and weight and carte blanche to those individuals who might do something stupid. Now, even though that was excessive, that did not inspire this lunatic in Baltimore. No, I hear it, but let me back up for a minute. I agree that most of this is mentally ill people. The point is, though, that when the cops get run over in Denver uh, at a protest, they're protecting, uh, and then the crowd chants, you know, hit them more, kill them or whatever, or we see uh, the media hyping cops being shot, that will cause mentally ill people. You can't say it's the media's fault in court. You couldn't convict them from my lay understanding, but you can sit back and make the judgment that they're fanning the flames. Alex, you know what you and I are doing right now? Fanning the flames. You know what George Washington did? He fanned the flame. Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, fanned the flame. Because if you don't fan a flame, then we're talking pablum. And that's the way it goes. 
Because there's an old idea between correlation and cause. You heard this all the time. People use this idea that marijuana is a gateway drug, that marijuana causes heroin addiction. No. Let me tell you what you also have here. I want all of your viewers and listeners to pay attention to this. We have something that we're going to have the advent of a media superstar. His name is Pat Lynch. Pat Lynch is the union head of the, of the Patrolman's Benevolent, Benevolent Association. And by the way, on my website at lionelmedia.com, there is a link of how you can donate, if you want, to the New York City uh, Widows and Children's Fund to help the family members. Because if you want to donate at Christmas time, help the family members who are left behind. That being said, Pat Lynch, when he heard this, he went berserk meaning de Blasio's statement about his son. So what he did was he instructed all of his officers, if they wanted, they could download a form, this is before this tragedy, that said, I do not want the Speaker of the City Council, and I do not want the mayor at my funeral in the event I'm killed in the line of duty. How awfully pythonic and vatic that was and prescient, sadly. Lo and behold, we have this. And when the officer, when de Blasio walked in to check on him, the police turned their back. He also was late in going to try to be uh, to uh, give his, his uh, sympathies to the family. Governor Cuomo came in. Alex, what I want you to pay attention to is we're already talking about this. They're talking about New York going back to the days of the 70s. And as you know, there is a feel that people get. Bad guys on the street, a feeling of kind of who's in charge, what's going on, because there is a balance, Alex, a balance between police doing their jobs. And let me just say something also. You mentioned the, the, the arrest. You know, Alex, arrest is like childbirth. Many people have never seen a childbirth, but they know it's done, and they think it's beautiful. And then they see it for the first time, up close and personal, and they say, this is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't want to have a part of it. Well, the same thing goes for arrests. There are 316.1 million Americans in this country, and none of them killed any cops in response to this, except for this one lone lunatic. So police officers, there's like 45, 48,000 in New York, and the 82nd Airborne is huge. There is this group of people that have to exert power, but they can't go over the line. They can't be mealy mouth. They can't sing Kumbaya. They can't look like Gandhi, but they can't be militarized goons either. We understand that. Then you have people who, Alex, enjoy the spirit of the movement. They don't care the facts of the case. They don't care about whether Eric Garner had anything to do to contribute to his own tragic death. Because the meme is going. We've got hashtags. We've got Skittles. Remember that, Trayvon Martin? Skittles. Trayvon Martin attacked George Zimmerman. Didn't matter. We've got our meme going. We've got the meme. We've got the posters. We've got our Instagrams. And by God, you're not going to deprive us of our movement. Well, that's what I wanted to get to here, uh, Lionel. Your take on why the White House, why the media, why MSNBC is fanning racial division and i think it's pretty clear it's all they've got black unemployment's doubled under obama uh the country in so many fronts is falling apart despite all these cooked economic numbers i think that's all you see is is this regression right back to base racial politics alex i don't think i i don't disagree with you but i don't think this is a an american racial citizen we don't have gripes with each other it's the police, right or wrong, and factions of the African-American community or people of color or poor, or whatever that is. I wish they stopped saying, we get along fine. Don't confuse that with everyday interplay. And don't automatically jump with this patellar Pavlovian reflex that whenever you see somebody who is black involved, that it's race. Eric Garner, the man who died on Staten Island, was not killed because he's black. Michael Brown was not killed because he's black. Akai Gurley, a young man who was killed in the stairwell of his apartment, who was shot because it was dark, maybe by accident, was not killed because he was black. Kelly Thomas, horrible, homeless, schizophrenic man, Fullerton, was not killed because he was white. Would you stop this thing that people are killing? By the way, 
There's a movie out now, Selma, which I, I, I commend to you. Look at what happened. You want to see racism? You want to see bull?